grand democratic exercise, the British people have decided to leave the EU. Now, they're looking hard for the exit. While a lot of people know they are against the EU, fewer know exactly what they want instead. So let us take you around the post-Brexit showroom, where all the available models for new economic relations are on display. They all have different designs, so that we can find the one that suits your priorities best. Whether that's to limit European immigration, be rid of European laws, or remain a great trading nation. Choice number one is to go it alone. I name the ship Britannia. Cutting loose from a sinking continent and setting out on a great global adventure, or what is more boringly called the WTO, or World Trade Organization model. If Britain makes a clean break with the EU, it can keep the foreigners out, and it can ignore foreigners when making its laws. Unfortunately, it can also forget about a lot of the lucrative trade it's currently doing. Going it alone means to trade on the lowest common multiple of market access, the WTO rules that almost every country in the world accepts. The WTO model is much worse for trade than the EU's single market. As EU members, Britons have been able to buy and sell to other Europeans just as if they were in Britain. No tariffs, no discrimination, and exactly the same standards and regulations across the continent. Cutting loose means losing those benefits. So this choice is not so much the glory of the wide open seas, it's more lost at sea. If that doesn't appeal, how about choice number two? The Canada model. Canada has struck a free trade deal with the EU, and the UK could try to do the same. It improves marginally on the WTO model, but it only covers goods, things you can load on ships and trucks. While the UK's greatest export advantages lie in services, such as finance and law. So what if you want to keep trade and services unimpeded? Then you might like choice number three. Ever heard of the Europeiske Ökonomiske Samarbeidsområde? Oh yes, you have. That's Norwegian for the European Economic Area, or EEA, which everyone calls the Norway model. There's a lot to like about the Norway model. The EEA agreement lets Norway trade most goods and services freely inside the single market without being part of the EU. It can even strike its own trade deals with other countries. But then there was that thing about taking back control, and Norway has accepted wholesale the free movement of workers and the EU's single market rules. So has Iceland, another EEA member. You could call it the Iceland model if you prefer. Maybe that would do something for the football, but it won't keep immigrants out. By now you might be thinking that we're looking at ever more absurdly small countries for the UK to model itself on. Well, wait till you see this. Some unscrupulous stealers will tell you they can get you a special, bespoke version of the EEA. Here, hold on. What do you think of these? This is choice number four. They're selling hundreds. EEA Plus, or the Liechtenstein model. Liechtenstein is in the single market through the EEA. It's allowed some limits on freedom of movement. But Liechtenstein is 25 kilometers long and has 37,000 people. You won't get this model in a size that fits Britain. And even if you did, it would still require full compliance with the laws governing the single market, but without any say in what they are. So I'm afraid there is no model that ticks all the boxes. If you avoid immigration or laws not made at home, you lose out on trade. So you have to choose which priority to give up. If you could accept free movement, we do actually have a model that gives full single market access and equal power of the rules. In fact, choice number five has been our best-selling model for years. It's called EU membership. But then that's the model you've just come to trade in. Something strange is happening in Japan, Sweden, Switzerland and the Eurozone. Official interest rates have gone below zero and are now negative. That means... Some